As always, this episode of Spaceflight News will bring you three topics from current development of space exploration. Contrary to our common practice, today we will focus only on China. To begin, we will examine another flight test of iSpace's automated landing system for its launch vehicles. Subsequently, we will focus on the successful launch of the Jukwe-2 launch vehicle, which delivered its first cargo into orbit. Lastly, we will look back on the launch of Long March 2D rocket, which carried three Yaugen 39-05 satellites. On November 5th, we reported on the test flight of this vehicle from Chinese iSpace company. The SQX-2Y demonstrator lifted off, reaching an altitude of approximately 180 meters, and then landed 168 centimeters from the center of the landing pad. Subsequently, in the same month, iSpace readied its demonstrator for another flight, which took place on December 10th. This time, the launch site was the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, with the test target set at nearly twice the altitude. The 17-meter-tall rocket, with a diameter of 3.35 meters, flew to an altitude of approximately 350 meters. Before, the JD-1 liquid oxygen and methane rocket engine reduced its thrust, initiating the descent. The iSpace company desires to utilize the acquired data and experience in future endeavors to recover the first stages of its hyperbola launch vehicles. Experiments with the landing technology demonstrator are reminiscent of activities conducted by SpaceX almost a decade ago. At that time, experimental propulsion landing of Falcon first stages were tested on the Grasshopper rocket. The SQX-2Y did not disappoint during its second flight test, touching down softly on the concrete pad at the spaceport. The company is already commencing preparations for its next flight test. The initial two launches of LADSpace's Jukwe-2 launch vehicle were test flights. The inaugural launch in December last year ended in disaster due to a malfunction in the launcher's second stage. The second flight, on the 12th of July of this year, was triumphant, making Juke 2 the first methane-burning launch vehicle to reach orbit. Nevertheless, it did not transport any payload on this mission, not doing so until its third launch. At 2338 Universal Time on December 8th, the launch pad 96 at Juquan Satellite Launch Center lit up by four TQ-12 rocket engines, launching the Juque-2 launch vehicle on its third mission. The Jukwe-2 is a two-stage launcher that burns liquid methane with liquid oxygen on both stages. Upon launch, the rocket weighs approximately 220 metric tons and stands almost 50 meters tall. It is capable of delivering up to 6 tons of cargo into low Earth orbit, although this capacity reduces to 4 tons when in polar orbit, as was the case in this instance. On this mission, three payloads were aboard the rocket, 
Honghu-1, Honghu-2, and the Tianyi-33 satellite, all of which are supposed to test new technologies. Consequently, the Jukwe-2 became the first methane-burning launch vehicle to successfully deliver a payload into orbit. Despite the unprecedented growth of private companies in China, the Chinese space industry still remains largely dominated by state-owned Long March launch vehicles. At 1.58 Universal Time on December 10th, a Long March 2D launch vehicle lifted off from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center. This two-stage launch vehicle stands 41 meters tall at launch and has a diameter of 3.35 meters. It weighs 232 metric tons at liftoff and is primarily utilized for low Earth orbit flights with a payload capacity of approximately 3.5 metric tons. On this launch, a trio of Yaogan 39 05 satellites were placed inside fairing. They will operate on a low Earth orbit at an altitude of 500 kilometers, inclined at 35 degrees to the equator. The launched satellites are likely to be utilized for signal intelligence. This mission marked the 500th anniversary of the Long March family of rockets, which had first been launched on April 24, 1970. The very first launch of the Long March 1 successfully placed the Dongfeng Hong 1 satellite into low Earth orbit. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.